Welcome this morning, hey, to ever increasing faith. Good morning, family. Good morning. How's everyone? Yeah. Our viewing audience, how you doing this morning? <laughs> Amen. Well, <laughs> I'm Dr. Jones. We're going to go ahead and pray and get started. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this beautiful day. Another day that you have made. Holy Spirit, you are Lord and you are in charge. I decrease that you may increase. Now speak through my lips, bring all things that are needful and necessary to my remembrance. I thank you that the ears of the hearers are anointed to hear, their hearts are open and receptive to receiving, and we vow that we will have been better for being here this day. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Satan and demons, I serve you notice once again and remind you that the forces of darkness and these issues are rendered null and void, non-effective, and powerless. We loose now, Father, your power and your anointing in the place this day. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, and all those who will agree will say, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, I'm excited for being here this morning. It's always a precious privilege and opportunity to serve you. And I just thank the Father. We're going to move right along. Mwah. So we're talking about today the peace of God. Woo, hallelujah. The peace, P-E-A-C-E -E of God, the peace of God. You know, it's so funny because when I do have an opportunity to share, I always have an example. <laughs> the Holy Spirit always gives me something to, to uh, share, you know, before you, before the word here. Now, this morning I had a beautiful morning, and it's still a beautiful morning. Hallelujah. I get to work early on time, which I like to make sure I get here on time. And I get in the office, and I start looking through my things, making sure I have everything that I need for today. Now, guess what? You don't know. I'll tell you. <laughs> I realize <laughs> that part of my makeup was at home. <laughs> and I don't live around the corner. Well, thank God I got here early. So there I had to get ready because it's a girl thing, of course. <laughs> I had to, <laughs> get, you know, get that together. So anyway, all right. Uh, then I get in the car. I'm headed to the freeway. And then as I'm headed to the freeway, the right, right lane, I usually stay in on Manchester to go so that I can just go on the, you know, jump on the on-wrap there. They had 75 different cones all the way up. <laughs> I, now I have to move out of that lane and, and into the next lane. Okay, moving right along. We're on the freeway. Get halfway there, and all of a sudden I'm looking. I said, what's going on? The cars are slowing down. I said, I know they didn't have, we did not have no accident today and now. It was uh, some kind of low fog or something. All, all of a sudden it came rolling in. I said, well, this is in the name of Jesus. We keep on rolling. So I, I did, got there, I got there, got what I needed, got back on the freeway, right, rolling up. Then I discovered the freeway is packed. I just had enough time to take the last off ramp before I wouldn't be able to get off the freeway, okay? So we got off on the off ramp. We are rolling up the street, and all was well. But to God be the glory, Amen. I got back in a timely manner. Amen. The peace of God. <laughs> the, the Holy Spirit gave me a song, Great is my peace and undisturbed composure. Great is my peace and undisturbed composure. Hallelujah. That's what I'm saying. You always get a, a, an example to share with. Amen. But we're talking about, as I stated, the peace of God. And so, if you would be so kind, you can turn with me in your Bibles. I'm reading from the Ever-Increasing Faith Bible. And we're going to go to Proverbs chapter number 3. Proverbs 3. We are talking about the peace of God. And just before we get started with the first scripture, I would ask you another question. What is peace? Okay, I have an answer. It's okay. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you. It's a state of tranquility or quiet. 
such as freedom from civil uh, disturbance and peace. So it's nothing like being in God's peace family. In this day and age, oh my goodness, you better make sure you are walking in the peace of God. Because in the world system, absolute mess. You know, it's unfortunate they have the wars and things going on, and that, that's a real thing. But the only way that we're going to really get peace, we have to get it from the author of peace, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know if you knew, but he is the God of all peace. A-L-L, -L, the God of all peace. Proverbs 3 we're going to start off because we always are talking about we want to walk in the wisdom of God and uh, do what his word says. It says, happy is the man that finds wisdom, the man who gets understanding. For she, for her proceeds, oh, verse number 13, Proverbs 3 and 13. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For uh, the, her proceeds are better than the profit of silver and her gain than fine gold. Okay, we're going to make an exchange here. When I, I start laughing, <laughs> I, my eyes <laughs> water up. <laughs> I, I laugh. When I laugh, I cry, in other words. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the joy of the Lord for sure. <laughs> Amen. I do. I have the joy of the Lord and his peace, and we all should have it and be walking in it. Okay. So now, uh, all things, uh, verse, this is number verse number uh, 15. She is more precious than rubies, and with all things you may desire, cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Um, after, <clears throat> her ways are ways of under, uh, pleasantness, and all her pa uh, paths are peace. Peace, peace. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about God's peace. In other words, no matter what we find ourselves confronted with, because we all deal with different situations and issues in life. But it's how we handle them based on what God's word says that makes all the difference. Taking his word. When we're talking about the peace of God, you see this peace, you uh, once when we receive Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, then we also need to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit so that we can have the power source to walk and live this life on an everyday basis. Another aspect of that is, is allowing the fruits of the Spirit to develop. So peace is one of the fruits of the Spirit. And this development is your own personal on the inside you. You're developing these as, uh, attributes of the Lord. And uh, he's given us this peace, but it's the enemy. There is a, a thief in the camp. Uh, John 10 and 10 says he is the thief. He is the one that comes to kill, to steal, or steals to kill and to destroy. So the enemy is always lurking around. He's always trying to throw little roadblocks in the way to get the Christian off of focus to what God's word says. So that's why we have to get this word, get it down, get it on the inside. And, and so that when the situations of everyday life come against us to confront us, the Holy Spirit has something to work with and bring back to our remembrance what God's Word says. Just like this morning, I had to stay focused. Hallelujah. <laughs> and stay in the peace of God. Made all the difference. But I'm thankful, you know, that we have his peace. And he's given it to us. So we can't afford to allow the enemy to try to snatch it from us. That's what I'm talking about. Um, let's go to, we'll go to here. Um, not peace. Let's, oh, go to Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah chapter number nine. Isaiah number nine. And, 
Let me see. These are not working right today. But we have the victory. No weapon form can or shall prosper. Mm hmm And uh, we're going to... Hmm. Okay, well, not in there. Okay. Okay, we'll do one more time. Okay, but anyway, over in Isaiah chapter number 9, and we're going to look at uh, verse number 6. Verse number 6, 9, and verse number uh, 6 of the ninth chapter of Isaiah. One thing about being here at Crenshaw Christian Center, which is a, a wonderful thing, is that we have... You have your Bibles, the pastor is ministering to us, and you can look in your Bible to make sure that what he's saying or she's saying, that's what's in there. And it's not just something that somebody's making up. It's important to know. It's important to know where you're being taught, that, you know, that you're just not just receiving anything. But here, we receive the truth of what God's Word says. Isaiah 9, 6 again, and as the Word is telling us, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, to have his peace, no matter what's going on in your everyday life, to be able, when you go home, to lie your head on your little pillow. And no matter what has gone or transacted through the day, to be at peace. His peace that passeth all understanding. Like Apostle would tell us, if we could bottle up peace and sell it, we'd be billionaires. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it's already been given to us. All we have to do is receive and walk in it. That's what's so exciting. I love it and to do it his way. Okay, and as, as, as I have stated, peace, the peace of God is one of the fruits of the Spirit, and that has to be, develop, be developed. And we, according to uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, which is a familiar verse, you don't have to turn to it, but we do learn to walk by faith and not by sight. And see, that's why the message of faith is so vitally important to be taught, because this is not just a one-day affair. Faith is something that we, it's a lifestyle that we all have to live and walk in every single day of our lives. And besides that, how many want to please God? I do. That's right. Well, Hebrews 11 and 6, it says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So I want to be pleasing before him. I uh, purpose in my heart to be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. And the good news is he didn't say we have to be perfect. <laughs> we all are working on something, I believe, or we should be. Well, I, I always have to count for myself. I'm working on a few things, but it's all good. <laughs> but my, my desire is to please him, do what his word tells us to do. Uh, let's, um, oh, let me share this. Uh, it's a story. Well, it's not a story. It's really, really true. Um, it's, this was back in 1990, and uh, it was, um, Miles Monroe was having a seminar, and it was over in the Bahamas. And this particular time, uh, it was the year of cent uh, Centennial, which is 100 years, I believe that is. And so anyway, um, this was exciting. We knew we were going to, you know, receive a lot uh, from, from the late Miles Monroe. So anyway, I decided that I was going to go. I had a roommate. And we stayed at this particular um, hotel there. And that hotel was called the Crystal Palace. Why was it called the Crystal Palace? Like we have a lot of mirrors in here. Well, the Crystal Palace had a lot of glass around it. And it had big old glass, big, big glass doors. So anyway, during uh, this time and just before the actual seminar began, um, that morning in the service, Miles Monroe, when he came in, he began to tell us about the hurricane. 
about the uh, head of the hurricane and, and, uh, through, and the tail and, and, and so on and so forth. So he was telling us that if we would take, uh, listen to what he's saying and follow instructions, we'll all be okay. Because now they hadn't had a, a hurricane there for so many years, it was very interesting that all of a sudden it's going to come when I'm there. <laughs> I can't pick up the telephone and call my big sister and say, I help. Only thing if I did call them <laughs> was they going to pray for me. <laughs> but anyway, that's why you have to know where your faith is and how to use it, okay? And to stay in the peace of God. So anyway, that, that evening, uh, after, after the service and everything, so uh, my uh, roommate and I, we went, went back to the room and everything. Our room was right there by this, uh, the supply room. So we were able to get extra, like, extra linen towels and things like that. Plus, we got these little hurricane lamps. <laughs> and so, uh, so uh, she put hers on one side, and I put mine on the other side, and we had our little matches and everything, so we were cool. So later on that evening, uh, there was an announcement that came over the uh, loudspeaker, and they were saying that anyone who would like free refreshment, you can uh, meet in this uh, room where we had the meet. Or we're going to have the meeting, and so uh, we commenced to making a move to go and see what the goodies were. So, and as we were going, all of a sudden, you could the light started flickering. And the rain was cutting up. <laughs> and those doors of the hotel, like these doors, but they were larger, they had chains on them. And so this wind and that rain was blowing them doors. And I never heard it before, but that wind was whistling. That's the wind. <laughs> so I said, well, you know what? I think we'll just get ready to go back to our room. I said, we better take our flashlight, you know, while we were going. Thank God we did. So we got back to our room and everything. So uh, during that time, uh, the lights went out for a little bit. And uh, one of the uh, pastor's wives and her daughter were stuck in the elevator, but they were able to get them out. They were OK. And uh, so we got to the room. And uh, we had our, our little uh, snacks or whatever and got in there because we didn't have to worry about the elevator to get to our room. So we got there. And uh, so that night we uh, prayed. We began to pray. We had our little, like I said, the little lamps and the, and the uh, matches and everything. And so uh, we could look and you could see that water, how it's rolling and rolling and rolling. It's coming in. I said, but you're coming in, but you're not going to come up this way. <laughs> <laughs> not today. Uh, and if some of you know uh, Pastor Stephen Perilou, he was there at that time for this particular conference. And so anyway, uh, okay, Father, your word says that uh, you never sleep nor slumber, but I'm, I'm sleepy. I need some rest now, so I'm going to go to sleep. So I did, and the good news was that after we did wake up, that, that um, the uh, hurricane, it, it came somewhat up to us. But it left, and it went, and it destroyed a whole lot of the uh, airport. So a lot of people that were scheduled to leave that Monday couldn't leave because of, you know, that destruction that came. So I learned to do what Jesus did. Let's turn to Mark chapter number 4. Hallelujah. So you need to know, like I said, what God's word says. You need to know that uh, he's given it to us. He's told us to be the doer of his word and not just the hearer only. So that's on you. That's on me. We got to, you know, act on what his word says. And the thing about it is, when we do so, he said, I will. I'll confirm my word with the signs following. And I love that. He doesn't lie. Not at all. Okay. Now, this is uh, Mark number four. And we'll look at verse number uh, five, I mean 35. Okay, on the same day, you have it? You ready? Yeah. Okay, on that same day when the evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Uh, now when they had left and the multitude, they took him alone in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was 
uh, in the stern, asleep, hello, and he said, and, and they said to him, teacher, <laughs> do you not care that we are perishing? <laughs> then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. That's what I said, peace be still. You're not coming up in here and uh, destroying this place while we're here. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? See, so what all that we do, faith is always a part of that. And that's why we have to, to uh, uh, learn how to use our faith in, in uh, everything that we do, but, you know, based on what God's word says. And I was using that faith in staying in the peace of God and calmness and knowing that he's got us. You know, it wasn't my time to go nowhere. <laughs> it wasn't that kind of a time, praise the Lord. So I said, I'm, uh, we said, well, we're safe in your hands, and you are. We are safe in the hands of Jesus. And um, they, like that commercial, Allstate, they would say, Allstate said, you're safe in their hands. Mm -mm. I'm safe in Jesus' hands. <laughs> That's the hands. <laughs> Allstate cannot compare. <laughs> To Jesus in that big hand. <laughs> He's got us, family. And we just have to learn, like I say, how to stay in that peace. Yes, you know, in the, in the natural, uh, uh, things are coming against your mind. You know, the enemy is trying to bring you negative thoughts and ideas and suggestions. Well, look at that and listen to this and so on and so forth. But you have to know in spite of the word tells me thus and so. And I'm going to stay in the peace of God. I know he has me. It's all covered. So I got, like I said, I'm sleepy. I'm tired now. We done came all this way, you know. It, uh, <laughs> it took a little while to get there. I need some rest now. So what did I do? I finally dozed off, or we finally dozed off, and thank God we were safe in his hands. So he confirmed his word with the signs following. And that's what we have to know, that he's a God of his word. He'll always do what his word says, all that we will believe and confess in line with his word. Then he said, I will confirm my word. So he's faithful. You better know it, and you better know how to act on it. Turn to uh, the Gospel of John 16, Gospel of John chapter number 16, the peace of God. There's nothing like being in his peace. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, my goodness. It is it's a good thing. I say don't leave without it. <laughs> the peace of God. Okay, in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, and we'll look at verse number 33. It says, These things have I spoken to you, that in me you may have, what? Peace. In him, he says, you may have peace. In the world... You will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Why? Because I've already overcome the world. And that's where we are today in this time. Not, that's why you can't trust on what's going in the world. You have to trust on to what our Father says through what is word, in his word. That's what we have to learn how to trust. And, of course, like I said, to stay in his peace regardless to what the situations and circumstances are trying to come against us through confront us and you know like I said peace it's it, it's um mm, it's just awesome his peace that he gives us but like I said we you know you can be you know say like if you're dealing with with dogs or something and you're you had a fear of dogs or, or something to that effect hey if I'm going somewhere and the dog is coming out I just said mm -mm, I got the peace of God no you're not going you stay there Rover or whatever <laughs> I got to move on, and I'm staying in God's peace, and you're not going to bother me. No, seriously, one day I was going down when I worked for Channel 7, ABC, and I'm walking up the street, and all of a sudden, this, uh, what's the, the big dogs with the spots? Don't, uh, what? Dalmatian. I'm serious. This, this big, uh, he was tall. Dalmatian comes running out there, and he jumps on my shoulder. I said, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and then he said, Woof. <laughs> and he ran on back. Uh-uh. No. <laughs> I 
I know I'm real tall, but that Dalmatian was, whoa. Uh-uh, we ain't having that today. <laughs> but that's what you have to do. You have to stay. You can't be moved by what you see or feel. You have to be moved by what God's word says. You know, you're dealing for some kind of a house mortgage or something like that. And in the natural, you know, I see that I don't have all the funds that I need. But, Father, I'm trusting you based on what your word said. You told me that you would supply all A-L-L, my need according to your riches and glory. Now, by Christ Jesus, I'm going to enter and stay in your peace regardless. Hey, that don't have it all or whatever, the Holy Spirit, if you trust him and, and, and he'll direct your step. You know, call. You can call. Talk to somebody. And, and then trust that when you get the, the individual, it's the individual that you need it. And the favor of God, ha, gorosa, will be delegated to you. But it's still, I know I might be checking, I might be a little nervous or whatever, but God has your back. Amen. See, that's why we can't. See, and that's why uh, uh, Apostle would say, you have to turn off sense, knowledge, evidence, what one can see, feel, hear, touch, and taste. When it's according to the word of God, it has nothing to do with sense, knowledge, evidence. It's what I believe and what I confess according to this word. Hallelujah. And he is the one that said he would confirm his word with the signs following. I love that about him. He is so faithful. Turn to Isaiah, uh, Isaiah chapter 26. We need to understand and know that peace, that walk in his peace, the peace of God that passeth all understanding. Mm. I, okay, Isaiah 26, are you there? Okay, look at number three. It says, you will keep him in perfect or complete peace, in other words. What, and then it says, whose mind is stayed on you because you trust in him. And see, it's, we're in a spiritual warfare. The enemy doesn't play fair. He comes by way of the mind, bringing the negative thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. That's why we have to learn that when a thought comes, not all thoughts are bad thoughts. So we weigh them. We evaluate them. Wait a minute. This is not God's MO. I'm not going to accept this mess. You've got to go, devil, in the name of Jesus. I don't receive that. And that's what we have to do because he wants, you're sitting there, you keep sitting there, and uh, he's going to entertain you, say, well, if she, oh, she likes that, I'm going to give her some more. And before you realize it, this little thing that was a little pea-sized could have been dealt with, now it's a big old mountain. Oh, God, what am I going to do now? Hallelujah. Hey, remember what God's word says. You have to be the doer and just not the hearer only. The enemy is trying to steal our peace. We're not going to let him have it, correct? Not, I'm no, I know I'm not, you know. You're not getting my peace. I love resting in the peace of God in spite of, like I said, situations and circumstances. His peace, peace like a, ooh, like a river. Uh, I love like going on the water because, you know, it's, you can sit there and, and it's peaceful. Oh, it's so relaxing. Amen. Well, that's what God wants us to do, enter into it. Oh, Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrews. We're brewing pretty good right about now. <laughs> Hebrews, <laughs> Hebrews uh, chapter number four. Hebrews chapter four. Amen. This the peace of God that we need to operate in. Okay, so a good question is, well, Dr. Jones, how do, I, how do I walk in this peace? I'm glad you asked. I have an answer. Hebrews chapter 4, you're there. Let's look at verse number 1. It says, therefore, since a promise remains entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard... Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, did not profit them. Why? Because it was not mixed with faith in those who heard it. So, see, we have to apply our faith, like I said, in staying in the peace of God, but you can't get away from faith. That's why we have to, it's a lifestyle that we have to walk in it every single day, or should walk in it every single day of our lives. And the good news is, the Father will meet you where you are. You never have to be concerned that I don't know that all that Dr. Betty knows. I don't know all that Nana knows. But what I know, I know. 
Hallelujah. But he'll meet me where I am. He'll meet you where you are. And we're not in competition. See, it's, to, it, it's according to what you apply yourself in in the word of God. I can't do it for you. You can't do it for me. But it's a personal situation. But if you want to stay on top of the situations and circumstances of everyday life and you want to stay, you got to stay in this peace. Hallelujah. Because it's nothing like it. The enemy is a liar. And like I said, and uh, we're not going to allow him, you know, to disturb our peace. It, that's out the question. No, he, you got to go. But see, the thing about it, when I said he comes by way of the mind, bringing the negative thoughts, lies, suggestions, you have to do something about it, but you have to do it immediately. It's not like, oh, yeah, well, yesterday I knew I should have. Yeah, I should have had all that I didn't. But anyway, no, you have to address it immediately. When that negative thought comes and then you realize, like I said, you, you know, you're checking it out. Mm -mm, this is not from God. I'm not accepting this. You have to cast down that thought. But I can't do it for you. You can't do it for me. Thoughts come to us all. But like I say, we, we examine them. And it's not lining up with the word of God. Mm -mm, out. You've got to go. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. God's word is so good, it's life-changing, and if you'll do things his way, ah, you'll reap the benefits all the time. It's awesome. 2 Corinthians 10, uh, are you there? Let's look at verse number 3. It says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing cap it to every thought captive um, to the obedience of Christ. We have to do that. We have to do it. Like I said, and you have to do it immediately. Because if you don't, the enemy says, well, he likes that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give James some more. He likes that. I'm going to give him some more to work with here. Okay? So if he didn't do anything about it, oh, well, that's on him. <laughs> but the thing about it is we can all do it. And we all have to do, that's another thing. We all have to do the same thing. It's, a, a, it's a, a, like I say, applying yourself to the word of God. It's a, like going to school. You know, you're not going to start off in, in, in college. You'll start off in, in uh, kindergarten, grammar school, elementary school, uh, junior high, high school, college, so on and so forth. You go. Well, if the things in the word of God is similar to that, it's a time, it's a process. And the more you get in it, more you study it, more, like I said, and uh, incorporate learning these scriptures that minister to you. The scriptures, you know, that really speak to you. Start memorizing those scriptures so that, like I say, when the enemy is trying to come and tell you some kind of lie and, and blow things up, then you can know what God's word says and say, no, devil, mm -mm, I know what you thought you was going to try to do, but uh-uh, no, you over, you out. In the name of Jesus, with the quickness, you better do it. You have to do it. And like I say, quickly, there's a word that us as Christians cannot afford to have in our vocabulary, and that word is procrastination. Amen. Procrastination. Procrastination is assassination against motivation. What am I saying? I could have, should have had an order, I didn't, and now, oh, woe is me. There again, as I related to the fact that when the enemy is trying to uh, Blow up your mind with these lies, these negative thoughts and suggestions. You have to deal with it immediately. Oh, you got to. That, that's the way that before Christ, that's what was going on with me uh, in the process, process of committing suicide, bringing negative thoughts, ideas, and suggestions to the mind. And you're saying, Hmm. Okay, well, now, how am I going to do this? I don't want to stab myself because I don't like the blood. Uh, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't want to shoot myself because mm -mm, I don't have a gun. Oh, I know what I can do. I could take some pills. See, he's bringing negative thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. And I know it's funny. It's a little comical right now. But in the natural, these young people, we got to pray for our young people because that's what the enemy is trying to distort their minds. 
with these negative thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. This is real. And it is a spiritual warfare, but we have to know how to handle it through the Word of God. You think of all these people on the streets doing all these crazy things, man up there banging a woman up, you know, banging her and all this. And, and this other day, now they got the thing with this, this young man and he's killing, you know, uh, trying to kill the animals, the cats and the dogs and all that kind of stuff. That's not normal. That's mental. So that's why we have to get in the Word of God and get our minds reacclimated to the Word of God. It's so very, see, I, I was so happy when I heard about, about renewing your mind, and that's what I needed. And I began to get in this Word and get the Word off the pages, committing scriptures that ministered to me so that I could stay uh, in the right mind and, and, and continue to, to really live my life and, and, and go and move forward in the things of the Word of God. Because the enemy doesn't like you. He doesn't like me. And good news, no, I don't like him either. I don't like anything that he, that he attempts to do. And you don't have to receive it. But if you don't do anything about it, oh, well. Oh, whoa, I can't change that. It's just real fast. But I said when I busted out of that, that party was over. Thank you, Jesus. That's what he tells us. Over in, turn to Romans chapter number 12, Romans 12. Faith comes by hearing, Romans 10 and 17, Romans 12, and we want to look at verse number 1 and 2. You there? Okay. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not, do not be conformed to this what world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So the minds, we got to get these minds reacclimated. Like I said, the enemy say, well, look, look at you. You're not going to be successful. Nobody cares about you. All kind of stupid stuff, lies that he's bringing to your mind. Look how they're looking at you. And then that's why these people, you know, on the street, you, you're going to take that? And then before you know it, they're moving around and, you know, taking something and, and hitting somebody or, or, or shooting somebody. These people that are, you know, going off with these guns and stuff. That's not normal. And then, they're, they're, you know, part of that is going with these drugs and things. They're getting all, you know, high. You know, and that really will mess up the mind. Yeah, you know, and uh, you know, you gonna take that? Uh, if I was you, mm -mm, I wouldn't. No, I'm not gonna take that. Mm -mm, you better go get them. Mm -hmm. Better do something about it now. No, the devil is a lie. Mm -mm, been there and done that. Mm -mm. No, we got better. We can do better. And and I like being free. Ooh, nothing like being free and walking in His peace through the Word of God. And the thing about it is he's not a respecter of persons. It's not about the family who you were born in, but it's about you being born into the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is, makes all the difference. He is the one who is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the one that supplies all your needs. He is the one that's there. He said, what? I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always. Hallelujah. Our family and loved ones, they can do things for us, but hey, they might not can be there all the time. You better know you some Jesus. You better know what his word says. Hallelujah. I call on that name. This, this is not, no, you know, this is all about uh, life every day, survival, well, you know, in this world. He said that you're going to have the tribulation and all the stuff in the world, but he, said us, he told us to be of good cheer because he's already overcome the world. He's going to, we have peace in God, in his word, through what his word says. Oh, I love taste and see the Lord is good. Amen. Psalms 34 and 8, he said, taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. And I trust in the Lord. I trust in the Lord. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful to the word of God. Oh, I'm telling you, I get excited about the word just as I was excited this morning. In spite of, <laughs> praise the Lord, God is good. I said, uh-uh, you're not doing nothing to me. I'm going in there and I'm going to drop it like it's hot and make it like it's plain. 
<laughs> don't mess with me, okay? I don't take orders from you, fool. I take orders from my heavenly father. I just want to please him and stay in the peace of God. Ooh, I can't, I can't begin to explain. I don't have all the words to explain about his peace. But some of you know what I'm talking about as far as peace goes. I can't fully define it, but it is so, so awesome. You might have a, a decision you need to make. Hmm. Well, the Lord, he, you, you ask him, ask him, Father, I don't know in this situation. I don't know what way to go. I don't know what move to take. I don't know what step to take, but I'm trusting you. And when you ask him and you are quiet, there will be the peace of God that passeth all understanding. It's not going to be in your head. There is a rest deep down on the inside. Regardless to what any man or anyone says to you, you're going to know that you know that you know knows what step to take, what move to make, because, oh, God, I'm trusting you. Hallelujah. And he said he would, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, he's going to always lead us and guide us into all, A-L-L, truth. Not some, but all truth. He'll guide our steps. Our steps are being ordered by him when we commit our way to him. You have to understand God is not going to, you know, just force his way into your life. He wants you to invite him into your situations and circumstances that you need an answer for of how, do I, how, how best should I handle this. He wants to help, but he's a gentleman. Like I say, he's not going to force it, but you say, Father... I need your assistance here. I, I need your guidance uh, through the help of the Holy Spirit. And he said he would do it. And oh, the way he does it, oh, it's so awesome. You know, you'll, you might try to sit and try to figure out how he's going, what, what, what way he's coming. I guarantee you it's not going to be that way. <laughs> and he comes in a whole nother way. I love his M.O. It is so beautiful. You know, because he's not limited, but we are. We are, to a certain, you know, to a certain degree. We might know a few things, but he knows all things. <laughs> That's why he says to trust him. Just give it to him. He wants to help us out. He wants to take this, this, this heavy load, the burden off of us and give it to him. You know, in fact, we're not designed to carry the weight and the load of all that kind of mess in the first place. He wants to take it, but you have to say, Father, I'm inviting you to take it. I don't want it. <laughs> it's driving me up a tree. <laughs> I thank you for your help in this matter. Oh, and then that, oh, the peace. <sighs> take a deep breath, the peace. That passeth all understanding. It'll begin to mount guard. And garrison itself over your heart and mind. Turn to Philippians chapter 4. Oh, thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for your peace. Your peace, walking in the peace of God. Oh, my, 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 my. It is a good thing. It is a good thing. And you know something else about the word of God? See, his word is inexhaustible. And, and, and the more you get into it, it's always going to be bursting forth with new revelation and things like that. And it's just awesome. You don't never have to be bird, uh, or bored. Mm -mm, his word is good. Uh, Philippians 4, you there? Yeah. Let's look at verse number 6. It says, be careful or be anxious or careful for no thing. But in what? Everything, not some things, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Why God? Next verse, and the peace, the peace of God, which surpasses what? All, not some, all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I love that. The peace of God. Amen. So he's saying in everything by prayer and supplication, give it to God and, and, and trust him. He's going he's gonna to guide you. Supernatural. It's a supernatural thing. Like I said, you'll know. I can't know for you, but you will know. 
You will know. You're the one that asked. I didn't. But he will make it plain to you, and you can go on and do what you need to do. And it's so awesome. It's so awesome. The peace of God is beautiful. Hallelujah. And the thing about it is it's free. It's free. All you have to do is receive it because he's already given it to us. Glory to God. I love that about him. And he's not, he's not going to take it back, but it's the enemy, like I said, because we're in this spiritual warfare. He's the one, like I said, trying to come against us and trying to get us off of focus to God's word. That's, the, that's his game, to get us off of focus to the word. And we're sitting there, you know, uh, being crushed down and so on and with everything. And that's, that's his game. But we don't have to be there. Been there, done that. This is better. Father, what, what, what? I'm going to ask you. Mm, you know all things. <laughs> and I love it. And then, like I said, as you are quiet before him, you'll get your answer. And then you can, you know, begin to move forward in uh, that that you, you need to do. But it's such a beautiful thing because I don't have to have the weight and the load and the brunt of trying to, trying to figure out. Now I know, you know, what I need to do. And I've already petitioned the Father. So my steps are already ordered of him. He's got it. I don't. And I'm moving on. You can too. Because that's what he wants us to do. However, we have to do things God's way and not our way. Yeah, been that, done that one too. <laughs> Doing it my way. I hit my head against every wall <laughs> like a door, four corners I couldn't get out. Boom over here, boom over here, boom back here, boom up here. Big mess. That's a big mess. Ooh, but being free and being in his peace, the peace of God, the peace of God, his peace that he's given us. He's the prince of peace. He's the king of peace. Turn to Hebrews 7, Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews, we're still brewing real good right about now. Okay, Hebrews chapter number 7. He is the, the king of peace. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And all we have to do is receive of that that he's already given it to us. That's the thing about it. He's not, he's not, a, 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 he's not going to give it to you and take you back. Like I said, it's the enemy that's trying to come against us uh, to try to steal and to kill. And destroy. Mm -mm. Look at 7, Hebrews 7, and then look at uh, verse number 2. It says, In whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, meaning what? King of who? Peace. Peace. That's what I'm talking about. We got the almighty God. He says over in uh, Hebrews, that uh, you don't have to go to it right now because I didn't have it uh, already written down. But it, it tells us that he's been tempted in all points, like as we, but yet without sin. We can do this, family. We can walk the walk. We can talk the talk. Be the doers and not just the hearers only. Staying on top of situations and circumstances in our lives. Thank God to be able to pray. Uh, and even though in, in the understanding, we can pray in the understanding, but better yet, you can pray in the spirit about these issues. Oh, and the good news is that stupid one doesn't know what you are saying. I just remind myself I'm talking to my heavenly father. Who answers our prayers? He does. So he's the one that we want to be or should desire to be in full communication with. Hallelujah. And you don't have to even think about it. You're just stirring up that gift on the inside, yet you're also edifying yourself. You're building yourself up from within. We're no match for the enemy and his demons. No, no, no. But when you stay prayed up in the spirit, yes. you get bold. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. You, you're so bold, I, you can say, I'm going to meet the enemy eyeball to eyeball, <laughs> lip to lip, and refuse to back down. Because I know who I am in my father. Amen. That's what we're talking about. So we can do this, but we have to do it there again, his way, 
and not our way. I like that because my way, mm -mm. <laughs> his way is so much better. But you know what? He's not made any of us a failure creature. The only way one can fail is by not allowing or giving God's word first place in our lives. Not last place, first place, whatever it is that we are dealing with. Father, I, I, I'm giving you first place in this issue here right now. For you show me the best way to work it out, what to do. Do I need to make a call? Do I need to do this, whatever? Uh, do I need to send a text doing this or what? What? You speak to me. Show me the best way to handle this issue. I'm telling you, folks, he will do it. Amen. He will do it. And then we even have the ministering spirits. You got to send them out. The helpers. You got to send them out. And I guess they say, Lord, here she comes again. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Now, you, you know, I say, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to send you out here in, the, in Jesus' name. Yeah, you send them out. Okay, boys, I need you. You go out now, prepare the way. Make the crooked way straight. Move on the hearts of those of whom I have to do with this day. Amen. Today, now. Do it now in the name of Jesus. So then I go on and move on and do what I need to do. But we have that authority in the word of God. I always say use it or lose it. That's your choice. Like I say, and God, the thing about it is he's made us all a free moral agent. So we have a choice. I can choose to do or not to do. That's on me. And I'm learning to rather to want to do it his way there again and not my way. But he's made it so simple. It's not difficult. Not at all. It's not a difficult thing. You're the one that can complicate it because you're sitting trying to, you know, like I say, maybe trying to figure out things. Forget figuring out. Just release it Amen. to our Father and let him work things out on our behalf. Yeah, you got a court case? Give it to him. Give it to him. A Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you now. I know I got to go to court on this day, this day here right now. Send the angels in advance. Uh-huh. Speak to the judge. Mm-hmm. Speak to whomever I have to do with in this matter. Right now, in the name of Jesus. No, these are real issues. Real issues. Seriously. You know, cause them to find favor for me. Hallelujah. I can't, I can't find it for somebody else, but I'm asking you to find favor for me. Whoop. Find favor for me in this situation. <laughs> yeah. And so, according to the word of God, according to your faith, be it unto you. Hallelujah. So, like I said, you, op you got to operate in it. You got to continue to walk in God's peace, his peace that passeth, not some understanding, but all understanding. Being able, like I said, to lay down at night on your little pillow, your head. Father, I thank you that in spite of all that's happened today, I thank you that I'm, just, I I'm entering into your rest and your peace. And it's all by faith. And there again, see, you can't get rid of it. It's a lifestyle. And, and that's how we have to enter into it and walk in it and then have all the benefits of it. That's what's so beautiful. There again, he's not a respecter of persons, but he's a respecter of what his word says. And you can do it. The thing about it is it's not a, a hard thing to do. It's just your willingness to want to do. And as you make that step, the Holy Spirit, whoop, He's there to assist you all the time. And I just love, I love his MO. So we just thank the Father for this day and for this time in the name of Jesus. And I just want to encourage you. As I'm encouraging you, I'm encouraging me and keeping it before me to allow the Lord to uh, help you in whatever it is that we need to deal with Amen. every day and yeah. continue to walk in his peace, the peace of God that passeth all understanding. I tell you, it's just, I can't, like I said, I can't uh, just give you or define just how this peace is, but it's a supernatural peace. Mm -hmm. It's a supernatural peace that you, that you walk in. My big sis, Dr. Betty, I just, I, I look at her, I just say, wow, she's awesome. She's in this peace. She's walking in this peace every single day. Hallelujah. 
I, I mean, I'm just so proud of her. What can I say? <laughs> like I know you are too. Amen. She's awesome. Amen. She's awesome. So, see, she's our living example Amen. that Amen. it can be done. Amen. But the will is to do it his way Amen. and not ours. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and stop here. And uh, we'll get ready to pray. Glory to God. Now, viewing audience, we're uh, not leaving you out. I'm going to uh, verbally pray, and everyone can repeat after me. We want to make sure that you have an opportunity to receive Jesus as personal Lord and Savior. Tell them I'll call them back. Hallelujah. So bow your heads and just, just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you that according to your word, that I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I would be saved. For with my heart, I believe unto righteousness, and with my mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Lord Jesus, you are my Lord. You are my Savior. And I thank you for taking spiritual uh, torment for my sins and mental distress for my worries and anxieties. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right. Do we have anyone in the house today that has not received Jesus? We just prayed the prayer, but we want to make certain. All right. We're going to also, I'm going to offer the prayer to receive the Holy Spirit. So let, let's uh, just follow me. Dear Lord, Dear Lord, just as I have trusted you for my salvation, I trust you now to give me the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. By, faith, By faith, according to your word, according to your word I, receive I receive the Holy Spirit and I will, and I will open my mouth boldly, my mouth boldly and, begin and begin to speak, to speak in, my language, in my new heavenly language in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So all you have to do is open your mouth and begin to speak, viewing audience, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so now, if you have questions that you need to have answered, you can also uh, respond to it uh, at admin at faithdome.org. So we would like to, to hear from you. And uh, we are so glad that you have taken this time and this day to spend with us to hear the word of God. You always have to remember it's not about who's giving the word, but it's the word of God that's going to change our lives. And that's what makes the difference. So you, all, you always have to, don't get stuck on the vessel, get stuck on the word of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So now, okay, we have now, if there's uh, anyone Assurance of salvation, anyone? Everybody knows that they know that they know. Hallelujah. Okay, yeah. praise God. All right, well, viewing audience, you, if you are not sure what have you, you can always drop that line at faithdome.org, and we will answer the questions. Yep, we will respond. Uh, okay, membership, anyone? I'd like to become a member of Crenshaw Christian Center. Okay, all uh, Everybody's a member up in the house? Mm, well, that's good. We're not mad. Okay, view, <laughs> viewing the audience, do you want to become a faith partner? Drop us a line, faithdome.org. We'll get you all hooked up. Amen. Amen. All right, let's see how, what's happening next. Praise God. I have to make sure we're we on the right page. <laughs> Don't do this every day. Okay, let's see. Ministry of the Word. Okay, prayer and invitation. Let's see. Oh, what time is it now? Offering time. Woo! Ah, hallelujah. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Offering time. <laughs> yes, it's a joy. 
<laughs> to be a blessing, to give. To be, we, done, we have been taught so very well. Now, uh, for those of you who have the offering envelopes, you can go ahead and uh, fill those out, and then I believe you will drop them in the buckets as we leave. Uh, on the screen should be uh, the uh, different um, ways that you can give, and all you have to do is just follow that. Yeah, there they are. The different ways that you can give, and uh, know that as you are doing it in obedience to the Lord, you're going to receive your rewards for being obedient. So uh, we'll go ahead and um, we'll pray. Father, we thank you now for those who are taking the time to be obedient to what your word says. You said give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So we thank you for this precious privilege to be partakers in what your word says, Father. And we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. And we thank you uh, for confirming your word with the signs following. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, and we all agree and say amen. amen. All right. So uh, I want to make sure that I'm certain that you can drop the um, uh, envelopes off as you're going out. Okay, correct. Very good. All right, let's see. Moving right along. Okay, for healing, is there anyone that would like agreement, prayer uh, for healing? If so, okay, just raise your hand and follow the direction of the ushers, and we will pray with you. Hallelujah. Uh, according to the word of God. Jesus is the healer. Amen. That's another one of his uh, attributes. That's another. He's Lord God, Jehovah Rapha, yes, the Lord God that healeth thee. He said in uh, 1 Peter 2.24 that by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. Amen, according to what his word says. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, Pray with these and come in too, thank you, and be in agreement with them. Of course, I'm not the healer. I'm just going to do uh, what God's word says, that we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So you know what you are believing the Lord for, that as we agree with you, he's the one that said he would confirm his word with the signs following. So as I lay hands on you, just a point of contact, but it's a way for you to help you to release your faith and thank the Father for the victory. So I'm going to go ahead and pray. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my sis now, that according to what your word says, that from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, that she's totally healed and whole in Jesus' name. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father, for my sis now. According to what your word says, I agree. I agree that it's already done, that she is healed now from the top of the head to the soles of her feet. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, and we all agree and say amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, precious, in the name of Jesus, receive that healing now in Jesus' name. By his stripes. Amen. All right. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. He's the healer. I'm not. But he did say, he, oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't see you there. He, and that he said he would confirm his word with the signs following. All right, praise God. Okay, thank you, my love. All right, let's see. Turn around here. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay, and let's see. We have some announcements here. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, we want to thank you, viewing audience, for joining us on, online today. Uh, and every one of you that are here today, praise God. All right, announcement, seniors. Yes, ma'am. Ooh, I'm going to say that again. Seniors. Yes, ma'am. Woo. <laughs> wow. Don't miss, don't miss the Seniors Fellowship Mother's Day. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Oh, celebration. <laughs> oh, is it for guys, too, or is it just for the women? It's right for everybody. Oh, oh, excuse me. All right, that's what I want to know. Okay, seniors, it's for everyone. Okay. All right, anyway.
anyway, the date, <laughs> thank you, brother. The date is May the 9th at 10 a.m., and uh, it will be in the Youth Activity Center with a special message from our own, yes, Dr. Betty, Woo! yes. <laughs> Hallelujah, lunch will be served. Tickets may be purchased, uh, let's see, as long as uh, supplies last. It's not going to be long. <laughs> so you better get it today by calling. You can do it by calling the church office Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday in the bookstore on Sunday after service. So that's how you can obtain your ticket. If you can, please sponsor another senior. Get your tickets before they all sell out. Space is limited. That's not no joke. Amen. When we talk about our girl coming, yay, yep, the house is going to be full, okay? There again, it's for you too, men. So we want you to come. We want to see your face in the place. <laughs> okay, all right. Now, CDs from April the 11th, Seniors Fellowship is now available in the uh, CCC bookstore located uh, in the Faith Dome. Corporate intercessory prayer will be held in the Fellowship Center tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Uh, 1220, we look forward to you joining us again at 7.30 p.m. Uh, this evening. Hmm. Okay, 7.30 p.m. this evening. Okay, yes. Enjoy the rest of your day and be blessed. Okay, yes, for 7.30 this evening for Bible study, in other words. That's what, what it is. Okay. And uh, also those online can join us or come back and join us at 7.30. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to close out for today. I want to thank you for taking time to be here today. I trust that you were able to receive a little something, something according to God's word. So we just say to God be the glory. Well, Father, we do thank you now as we are planning to go our, in our separate des uh, destinations. We thank you that the angels of the Lord are encamped around about us. We will have no accidents, nor will we cause any. We thank you for safety, for soundness, for freshness, and alertness. We give it all to you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, and all those who will agree will say amen. amen. You are.